Uh, and yeah. Bryce, when we're talking about murder hobos in our games, um, like, have you dealt, you've DM'd a little bit. Uh, how would you deal with a murder hobo or with a party of people who see everything around them as caches of experience, no matter who or what they are? Well, to maybe put a, a definition to what a murder hobo is, it's an individual or the entire group who just wants to solve everything with a sword instead of RP. Um, usually what I do as a DM is I establish what kind of game we want to run. And if everybody wants to be like that, then what you really want to do is just run a, uh, a dungeon crawl type game. If somebody, or well, if the whole group is just a, a group of murder hobos that just want to kill, loot, plunder, get the cash, you know, rescue the princess, behead the king, become the king, play that game. But if it's just one person, then you need to punish them. And the way you do that <laughs> is by imposing Listen. real world consequences. So let's wait a minute. How real world? <laughs> you seem to really enjoy that punishment part. Yeah. Okay. So so let's say, just for sake of argument, that Brandon has a character. By the way, this is why we do not play in Bryce's basement anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh well, not to mention the fact that it got flooded. But whatever. I think that's the same reason we don't play in Brandon's basement. But um, so let's oh, say for whoa. the sake of argument. Oh, uh brandon has a character and he just wants something that the innkeeper has and the innkeeper is not willing to part with it so brandon kills him <laughs> well the innkeeper is probably somebody that the townsfolk know so when he's not around anymore people are gonna notice so maybe there's an investigation and maybe he's found and arrested and now Brandon's character's in jail and has to either do something to escape or the party has to rescue him. That brings an interesting concept to the, the murder hobo aspect or murder hobos in a party. If you do hit a case where not everyone in the group wants to play that murdery game, the, the hyper violent game, and you, your solution is essentially to split the party, right? Because you're, you're not going to inflict a negative consequence onto everyone. You were, you're going to put the, the person who inflicted or killed the town's like, guard or whatever, and you're going to try and put him in jail. Well, how do you keep that from negatively affecting the party as a whole? Or is there any way to curb the one player instead of it and not affecting the group or the group dynamic well uh, always the first option should be to speak with the player um if you're having a problem player you should just talk to them especially uh especially if it's a friend somebody that you know hopefully that would resolve it but I've I've actually DM'd a game where I had to put somebody in jail for making horrible decision one after another. <laughs> Once again, are we talking IRL or in game? In game. Um, and the party's next goal was to rescue them from prison in some way. So I rewarded the rest of the party where the other person was basically in timeout because we had already talked about <laughs> murderous behavior. Well, you know, like you said, an in-game consequence, but sometimes it even goes to where Marina was talking about in the one campaign we had, and uh, Ryan's favorite character, uh, Teeny. And uh, <laughs> when, when he first came out being teleported into the area where everybody else was, uh, he was very disoriented, and there was a person with a weapon in front of him. So he attacked him, and he blew him off a bridge, and the guy died. And come to find out, he was a town guard. And so for the rest of the adventure, the town guard's son and wife would hound them. And no matter what he did, he was the guy who killed that kid's father. And uh, you know, it, it came into a part where it actually became a role-playable moment. Um, 
you know, the, the player was willing to go with it and he was trying to make amends and so forth, but you could, you could kind of do that without having to lock them up. Um, there are other ways. Yeah. yeah. That's just and an example. Because, when we did the other game, um, uh, Bryce that you were in and that same gnome village we were talking about when you all first came into the village, one of the things that I described was that there were prisoners working in the streets and how they were shackled and how there was magical restraints and so forth. So you kind of got the idea, if you just started randomly robbing shops or killing people, you're going to end up cleaning the gutter while everybody else is playing the game. So basically, again, time out. There was another way to do it without punishment, too, which I thought was interesting. In the last campaign we played, um, Dad was DMing, and he played it off of my character. My character was neutral good, and everyone else was, like, neutral chaotic. And so he had us walking by an alleyway, and someone screamed for help. So my character, playing that that alignment, just went to help. And so that way, you either had... To you guys had to make the choice to split the party or help. And you saved a kid who turned out to be a kobold. Shut up. That was later. So I'd like to touch on that. Um, not only because the murder hobo aspect kind of comes from the idea that you can do anything you want in the game, but really all of your character progression is based on experience from punching things. So how can you, instead of inflicting punishment onto the people who are taking that to an extreme, because essentially they're just trying to streamline the best way of playing the game. How can you allow for alternative ways of advancement to allow people that don't want to punch everything in the face to, to advance in the game which at its core is just experience for killing things. Well, you can always make it clear when you start the game that you're not using that sort of experience progression. You should be using a milestone progression. Uh, for instance, give me one second. In my favorite uh, supplement, the Essentials Kit, which you can get right now on Amazon for $15. Not a sponsor. And what it comes with is amazing. <laughs> they, they did not sponsor me. I have bought two of these with my own money, and they are fantastic. Um, you have an extra, you say? Uh, no. I gave one to uh, a friend who I taught to DM. Um, but in that, uh, you do not get experience for your kills. Even though it is uh, combat heavy, there are a lot of combat encounters. Uh, it is kind of a... The adventure is kind of a message board um, type thing, like from Witcher 3, where you go up into the town and they have the big board and you just take all the little notes off and do the quests. Uh, you get one level... For the first quest you complete, first couple quests you complete, and then after that, it's um, one for every two uh, quests you complete, and then after that, I think it's one for every three. So it's completing quests and progressing the storyline as opposed to how much experience is that farmer worth? Well, one of the things that we had spoken about in the last episode was using tools and so forth to create a good balanced CR adventure. And when you go with a milestone, adventurers or the, the group is more willing to walk away from something that's definitely going to kill them. Well, smart <laughs> groups walk away from things that they know is going to kill them. Anyways, um, but that having that um, threshold or that milestone experience or level advancement helps with that where you can give boons because someone has role-played really good, or if somebody really did something phenomenal in combat, and instead of just giving them the XP, they could get, like, you know what? Because you are so proficient with that weapon, and the last five things you have confronted, you have just taken out. You get a plus one. Like our crit list? Well, the crit list's a little bit different. 
the uh, critical role list, but yeah. We're, um, not the podcast. No, not the podcast. Also not a sponsor. Uh, but, <laughs> so. There's Brandon. Um, but yeah, so, the bud. Yeah. Just, <laughs> we are not affiliated so, uh, with critical role in any way unless they want to be. Yeah, then so come contact me. Not yeah. <laughs> Um, Should we start moving <laughs> off different uh, sponsors or possible yeah. sponsors? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll see team. We'll we'll see we'll see if Adam Koval will uh, will be on the show. Uh, he'll have to fall <laughs> well, pretty far we'll have, before. We'll have to really zoom in that camera. Yeah, but um, okay. So that's that's a little bit about uh, murder hobos, what they are, uh, how to deal well, with them in a group. Oh, go ahead, Tim. You never spoke on if you have ever played a murder hobo or if what you do with murder hobos. Well, okay. So I think everyone uh, to some degree has played a murder hobo, especially in my play style where I, I kind of, well, the first time I play a game, I try and inadvertently, not necessarily min max, but like figure out the best way of doing something and try and do it that way. And when the whole rule book says you need 900 experience to hit level three, my brain goes, well, how do I get 900 experience? Well, the way you get 900 experience is you kill 300 guards. <laughs> and so everybody that just walks up, it's just <laughs> whack-a-mole time until you, you beef up and then you go slay a dragon. Um, so yeah, I've been guilty. Um, the, the way that I would curb it, though, is to, like you guys all touched on, gauging the expectations of the group as a whole. Because if if people, even for a session, they want to play some sort of dungeon dive, go in, kick the door down, kill everything, run in, maps, tactical, espionage, Tom Clancy kind of Dungeons & Dragons, then... It, there's nothing wrong with that. Like your fun isn't wrong, but your fun may be wrong for a particular group. And it's all about just group dynamics and, and making sure everyone is having as much fun as each person can have in a certain group setting. So, I mean, maybe if you want to play every murder hobo game, you, you just don't play with the, the big, you know, our peers, you don't go to a Vampire the Masquerade uh, bondage nightclub with a Viking hat and run around screaming Fus Roda. Like, there's a place for you. It's just not there. 